do. It's a series of items, there's 10 of each items. And we'll show you how I get through it with the equipment that I've got there. So we're just making up a, set of, a new set of soft tools for the curved vice on the milling machine. So we'll get that out of the way first and, uh, and we'll crank on with the production job. So this is our material of choice. It's by choice because it's the only billet of aluminium material I have. So this is Kaiser um, aluminium 7050 and the temper is a T7651. Now this is some pretty traceable stuff this because you know, there's lot numbers, batch numbers, QA and all sorts of numbers on this. So as far, um, as, far as I'm aware of it's used um, a fair bit in the um, aerospace, aeronautical industry, where I guess you'd want your materials pretty traceable if you're making parts for aeroplanes and space shuttles and whatnot. So, but it's beautiful stuff to machine. It's really nice material. This, so this is probably the best alloy I've ever machined in my life. This stuff. So these are the prints for the first parts that we make. So our material we've already chopped up here and the square parts are for the second um, series of parts that we make. So we'll make a start on these ones and we'll uh, walk you through the process. with our round parts after the saw cut we need to deburr one edge and one edge only. We've got the mill running over in the background it's just uh, we're making up a fixture plate. So, So here we can clearly see the uh, hardening that's occurred to the plate due to the flame cutting on the edge there.
So we'll set him on a parallel and we'll just take a facing cut on both parts on both sides. So we're running this cutter at 1200 RPM and our feed is uh, approximately 300 millimetres a minute. It's only a very light cut we're taking so... Get the old good oil on it. Just milling our jaws to length. So I've just got a simple hard stop set up here, and that's the end I've just machined. So it's just a matter of dropping in the vise, push them up against the hard stop, and I've got my table dial. I've got a zero mark on the table dial where I did the previous one, so it's just a matter of coming up to that same zero mark. So these are our soft jaws, as you'll see they're numbered so they stay in matched pairs. So any features that get machined in them, we can indicate the saw off the ends of the soft jaws when they're reset up back in the vise, so they stay matched and your feature will still line up. So we have one in the vise now, so we're just preparing to set up for the whole dimensions on the Kurt vise. So we're 15 sixteenths down and 3 and 7 eight centres. 
but we're working in metric so we've just done the metric conversions so I'm just going to use an edge finder that'll get our distance back and our initial distance in for the first hole and what we'll do is because we have a stop set up here we'll run all the jaws through and we'll do one feature per tool so we'll run all the parts through uh, with a spot drill then we'll run them all again with the um, drill for the cap screw and then run them through again for the counter boring tool and then we'll reset and we'll do the same down here it's just a lot quicker to do that to put the parts in and out rather than do a tool change or a whole center change bearing in mind on this machine because we don't have DROs we're just doing it all with dials so it's really the quickest way to do it on a machine like this without a DRO so we've set our knee our cross travel to zero on our dial so our edge finder it's a 200 thou edge finder so, which is 5.08 diameter, so we halve that, which is 2.54, so we move across 2.54 and that will put us on the edge of the part. So 1, 2, 2.5, 4, okay that puts us on the edge of the part, so we'll re-zero. Now we can move across our 23.813. So we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, point two four six twenty three point eight. Um, one three, well, it's it's in there somewhere because each division's O two, so it's about there. So that's put us our fifteen sixteenths dimension in. So we'll do the same thing. We we'll just repeat what we've just done um, to get our centre distance to the part, and then work back from the centre distance, and that's our first hole location. Just one point to note, if this was a job that had a high precision of um, travel across that we had to do rather than just a set of bolt holes for some vice jaws, I would set up an indicator up against the edge of the table there. So when I re-zeroed the dial after edge finding, I'd, I'd have something to back me up and so I could just re-verify that we are on the correct dimension and nothing had moved in the process of re-zeroing the dial because as you would have seen if the dial is quite tight this will move a little bit and it just takes that little bit of error you can get out of the equation so we're in position here for our first hole so we'll just put a little mark there and we'll just do a quick anti-bozo check should be 15 sixteenths back this way which we are spot on so if we measure a distance back to the end of the part uh, inch and nine sixteenths so we go nine 
Let's get my ruler to behave. Inch and nine sixteenths, which should give us three and seven eight um, back to our part. Three and seven eight, and yeah, inch and near enough to inch and nine sixteenths. So we're looking good, so we can safely go ahead and drill all of our blocks in this whole location for the first hole. So what I do now is swap out to our drill we're going to use for the cap screws to mount the jaws. So we do all our drilling operations, run them all through on that, and as we explained before, then we'll run them all through to counter bore and any chamfering we have to do to, to the part. And then we'll move on to the other lo hole location. So I'll run all these parts through and then bring you back. That's the counter boring done, and I'll tell you one thing: never been so easy with the uh, having the quill wheel there to help with the quill movements. Okay, now it's time for our second hole location, which is down this end of the part here. What we have to deal with now is the backlash on the table, because we have wound from our datum edge here we've wound the table anti-clockwise to get to our first hole location now we've got to rotate the table lead screw clockwise so we have to keep track of this what's going on with our backlash so what we've done is we set up an indicator here now we've just got that on the knee of the machine and up onto the vise so what we do now is we switch dials we go to the right hand dial on the machine, which is back here. And currently that's reading the backlash in the machine. So what we have to do is we, we take our dial and we'll show you the movement up here. Now we need to travel that direction, but we don't. We travel the opposite direction. And then we take our backlash out and come back around in this direction, which is clockwise 
on this handle on this end of the table here. So we slowly bring it back. until our indicator whoops, is on zero now I've already moved this because I can't move the dial and hold the camera at the same time this is the point now where we re-zero this so if we look at the graduation on the left hand dial on the machine now that should show our backlash So we were on uh, 0 .0, uh, 0 0.82 um, or 0 0.84 sorry, we were here, so the second division in, so now we are here, second division in, so that's um, 0.4 millimetres of backlash. So now we, we can safely travel down our required distance to the other hole turning the handle clockwise 98.425 so that's how we get around any backlash issues and a direction change if you don't have a DRO okay this is where we do our anti bozo check to make sure we haven't missed a turn when we're counting our turns with the table and we're 98.4 so we're good to go with our other holes always pays to double check when you're working with dials there's another method I use too I'll quickly show you down here on the table I have a scribe line here just very only very lightly scribed in the marking blue and another one up here and that will give us our same measurement Or if we go to Imperial, as we're supposed to be, uh, 3 and 7, 8. We're spot on there. Just a double check, and it pays to do it. Okay, we'll do a test fitment of our jaws. And see how we, how we made out. So these jaws here, I've left them a little bit longer than the, the standard um, Kirk jaws and they're not quite as deep because that's just the material that I have. But what we'll do, that will do, that will enable us to mach machine features into here to hold various parts. Now, say for example you might have a, a round part, it might have to be faced on one end or faced to length, it might have to have a, say a hole drilled and tapped in it. Well, it's far better to do it in a situation like this. So you could machine a scallop out of the jaw, drop the part in, you get a face mill, and you face them all off to length with a face mill, and then you can put them all back through and drill and tap your hole. Now, it's a far quicker way to do it than trying to do it in a lathe. Plus, you're facing it with a face mill, because this is... 10, 10 30 steel unless you're running at a very high rpms you're not going to get a good finish on this type of steel or any you know mild steel like that so we can run a face mill quite fast 
take a quick cleaning cut up will maintain a good finish. And what I mean by doing this in the lathe at a high speed, by the time your lathe starts and gets up to speed, you take your cut, it takes a fraction of a second to take your cut, or you know, a couple of seconds, and then you turn your lathe off again, and by the time you, the chuck winds down, so you can put your chuck key in, remove the part, put the next part in, um, it takes up quite a bit of time. It actually takes longer to put the thing in and out and to get set up than your machining time. This way, we don't have to turn the machine off. We have our scallop, we drop the part in, take a cut, wind back the table, undo the vise, drop the next one in, boom, boom, boom. We don't have any issues with them all coming out different lengths. If we drop them down onto a stop, every, all our lengths are going to be controlled. And then as far as the drilling and tapping goes, we will use a tapping head, which is far quicker than drilling a blind hole and tapping a blind hole in the lathe. So it really reduces your machining time. So that's what I'm making these soft jaws up. So different uh, features can be machined in them to hold different parts and it just cuts your production time right down. Okay, so as we just mentioned, next week we'll cover machining the various features into our soft jaws and that will aid us in the manufacturing process for this short run of parts as to speed up production time. And we'll also complete, I probably won't film much of this, our fixture plate here. It's just going to be drilled and tapped like a piece of Swiss cheese with a heap of hold down bolts in it. As like a lot of people have done these before so I'll just put in a couple of really quick clips. I won't really go into it until we actually go to use the thing which is still part of this project. So. Uh, yeah, next episode, yeah, we'll, as we said, we'll get our facets machined in and we'll start the first uh, part of the small run production job that we have to do. So, thanks for sticking by and uh, see you next episode.